Hey everyone, it's Kate, and today is part four of the Tabula Rasa jacket from Fit for Art Patterns. And I'm gonna show you how to hem it and how to sew the neckband on. If you're watching on YouTube and you wanna learn more about sewing and quilting, you should like and subscribe to our channel. And if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, um, you should consider joining our Facebook community. That is where I hang out and I'm there to answer questions, admire what you make and show you what I'm working on. So I'd love to see you there. Um, it's April and April's theme is Earth Day Every Day. The giveaway is an awesome mending kit that I'm gonna show you when I switch over to the overhead. Um, and the question of the month is, what do you do personally to protect the environment? Do you recycle? Do you walk to work? Do you give to environmental groups? Let us know in the um, comments below and we will enter you to win the mending kit. Um, the confident shout out today goes to Darcy Kaufman, who is one of our local customers and she used her plan to quilt and quilt to plan book to plan a gorgeous quilt. She also shared the um, saying on the selvage of her fabric, which was one kind word can warm three winter months, which is a Japanese proverb. Um, we dream of only three winter months here in Montana. So I think we need more than one kind word to get through our winters, but it's a lovely thought. All right, let me switch over to the overhead and I'm gonna show you the mending kit that you can win um, this way. Okay, I'm gonna move my whole, there we go. All right, so you can, um, you'll get a little pack of canvases to use that are great for um, mending jeans and other heavy fabrics. Um, two skeins of sashiko thread, some sashiko needles, um, a sashiko thimble, a tailor's wax, and this great book called Mel Mending Matters. It's a slow fashion guide for a well-loved wardrobe. Um, so once again, just answer the m question of the month in the comments below and you might win this kit. Okay, so after you sew the sleeves on and um, sew the side seams, which I did last week, you'll wanna try on your jacket and trim the sleeves and the jacket body so that they are one inch, so you could, so there's, so they're one inch longer than you want the final um, length to be. And then you can do a one inch hem. Um, I do my hems very in a very similar way um, to the instructions, but slightly different. So I'm gonna show you how I like to hem. Um, we have this really great stuff called woven stay tape. And um, I'm using the one and a quarter inch wide version. What I like to do is, um, iron the stay tape to the bottom of my hem. And hopefully I forgot, I, good, okay. I was afraid I had put it upside down. Um, I like to use a press cloth when I iron interfacing or stay tapes, but of course I forgot to bring one to arm's reach before I started this video. So I iron it on and then I'm gonna turn my hem up one inch. And the one inch is gonna be kind of covered by the stay tape. So that adds some stability and strength to the point where I'm turning it up. So I do like to measure. And I have this one inch wide ruler that I really like. I have a six inch one and a 12 inch one, but I, I actually like the six inch one more. I find it more versatile, but the 12 inch one is always easier to find. So 
when I'm hemming, I, I always uh, pin my hem up on, right onto the ironing board um, with glass head pins or any kind of pin that doesn't melt if you iron right on top of it. I learned this method when I learned to teach people to learn to sew and I love it. I've burned so many fingers so many times and now I don't. So I press it up an inch and then I mean, so sometimes I, um, <laughs> I'm good, okay. Sometimes I surge this edge, but I didn't do it this time. So then I'll just, after I press it up the inch, then I turn it under uh, approximately a quarter of an inch. And once again, pin it to the ironing board. Um, my hemming method is a lot of steps but it, I think it saves a lot of ripping and redoing. So I'm gonna press it again. And it really helps to have the stay tape um, adhered to the fabric. It makes it create a much crisper um, hem and just makes everything easier and it makes it, hang a little bit better. So after I have turned it under the quarter inch, it's almost ready to go. But I do one more step, which is to baste it in place with giant running stitches. I'm using a hundred weight silk thread that I um, double and put in a knot in the end. Um, you don't really need a double layer, a double layer of it, but um, it's so fine and so slippery that it comes right out of the needle if you don't double it. So just because it's easier, I double it and knot it. But this really doesn't take very much time. And I would go all the way across, but by hand basting it from the wrong side, on the right side, I have a clear line so that I can top stitch it from the top. And I know that I'm gonna be catching the, the turned under edge on the wrong side. If I'm feeling really saintly and fancy, I will, even draw a line kind of connecting my basting stitches because you can see that they're not perfect. Um, and then I have a really clear line to sew along when I'm sewing my hem. I don't always do that, but I'm just showing you how to be super awesome. And now I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine. I'm not gonna sew this hem. I'm gonna show you how I sew the inside of a circle. So here is the sleeve. I've actually already hemmed the other sleeve. And when I sew in a circle, instead of going around the arm of the sewing machine, I sew on the inside of the circle. So I have this, my sleeve is inside out and I'm gonna sew right along here. And I hope, I'm gonna have, Rachel can tell me if you can see what I'm doing, but let me get, and start at the, the seam lines, it's kind of hidden. I'll go forward a couple stitches. It's also nice, I, I rarely um, change my, my bobbin thread when I go from project to project, or I just have, I mean, I have wound bobbins in, in a variety of colors, but I don't always spend the time to wind one with the exact same color as I have on top. 
And that way, it just makes it, that makes it so I really want to sew my hems from the right side because that's the side where I have the right color of thread. So I'm just doing a few inches at a time. And there we go, back stitch. And, um, oops, turn off the back stitch. And even though a couple times I sewed right on top of my basting stitches, because this is this such a slippery, and of course, because I put a knot in one end, it's a little stuck, but because it's such a slippery thread, it really will come out easily. even if you sew right on top of it. Of course, it's not gonna come out easily today on camera, but I promise in real life it does. So you just pull out your basting stitches there. And you have a nice hem and you're sure that you caught the edge on the other side. Okay, I'm going to stay over here and we're going to talk about the neckband. So the neckband for this um, jacket is just, it's two very long rectangles that you sew together at the center back seam. Um, you do want to um, interface both of them. So I'm using our Perfect Fuse light interfacing to add just a little bit of structure to the neckband. Um, after you interface, and I did serge both edges, um, you, you'll sew the knot, the short edges together. This actually had a, knot, a notch in it. And press that open. And then you're gonna wanna sew at the 5 8 inch from the center back down to the hem on one side and then from the center back down to the hem on the other side. Oh, and I forgot an important thing. You do, you wanna press it, press the neck band in half, wrong sides together the long way. And that, but you're not gonna sew both edges to the neckline, you just sew, you open it up and sew one edge to the neckline. So I am gonna sew the second edge on camera and then talk about um, clipping the, the curves and how to hem the bottom. Here, and here we go. So starting at the center back, and my machine was already set to do a little back stitching, so it did. And I just want to feel, I can feel, oh yeah, this is my, the little, um, I made a neck dart in, in the first of this series, I showed you how to make a um, high round back adjustment and it included neck darts. So I could feel that underneath. There we go, there's the shoulder seam. Just wanna make sure, I always use my, I call them sewer's fingers to make sure that it's nice and smooth for the next few inches before I sew that there's nothing puckering underneath, no folds. This is a pretty um, easy part of the jacket. I love a straight seam. As we hit April, at April's always the hardest month for me here in Montana because it just doesn't quite get warm yet. And it feels like it should be spring. But we're not quite there. It snowed yesterday. 
I was glad I had my wool hat walking home. Okay, almost to the end. Okay, and then we're going to back stitch. And so the end of the neckline is much longer than the hem, and I'm going to show you how to um, even it up. So we're going to go over to the overhead. Well, actually, first, before I do that, I'm going to show you how to clip and press the neckline, the curved part of the neckband. So this is from the center back through the shoulder seam and a little bit farther along. You want to, um, oh, sorry, I keep forgetting where the camera is. Um, you're just gonna wanna do some clips to release the fabric so it can turn along the curve. You don't need to grade, I don't, well, I guess if I were really being good, I would probably grade this seam, but um, especially if you're using a thicker fabric, you'll want to grade the seam as well as clipping it. <clears throat> um, but this is a pretty thin fabric, so. I am gonna, for the curved part, I'm gonna put it on the tailor's ham. You see that nice curve and press it toward the neck band. And then you'll press it toward the neck band all the way along the side and then I'm gonna, I am gonna press it at the very bottom where the hem is so that I can show you how you even it up. So I pressed it and now I'm gonna press the neck band hem up so it's even with the hem of the body of the jacket. I just put a little crease there. It will be my guide for sewing. So then you'll un unfold it. And then you're gonna fold it along. This is the lengthwise crease right here. I'm gonna fold that against itself kind of in the wrong way. And then keep that, the seam allowance going toward the neck band. And then I'm gonna pin it in place. I'm not gonna sew it for you because I will can show you on the other side, but wanna get it in place and then Hopefully you can still see the crease and you're gonna sew about a 16th of an inch below the crease. And I'm gonna flip over to the other side. And show you what that looks like. So <clears throat> I sew just right below my crease and then I trimmed, trimmed it to about a quarter inch below my sewing. I turned it right side out and double checked that it matched up with the hem and it does. And so then I felt safe to um, clip the corner and press it in place. Um, so at this point, you just need to sew this edge to the jacket so that it doesn't flop around. Um, you can either do that by um, turning it under 5 eighths of an inch and hand sewing it 
right to the seam line, or you can baste like I did for the um, hem, baste it in place and machine sew it, stitching it in the ditch, which is what I did on my other version of this jacket. Um, and I will do with this one as well. I love my clothes to be super washable and I find that um, as much machine stitching as possible makes it makes them hardier. So that is it. That is how you make the basic tabula rasa jacket. Um, the, there are also instructions for lining it um, and for putting buttons on and for jazzing it up even more than just using two different fabrics. Um, so I hope that you decide to try one of these jackets because they are really fun and they're really pretty easy. If you follow us on Instagram or Facebook, we'll be posting um, pictures of the first jacket I made where I didn't do a high round back adjustment and the second one I made where I did do a high round back adjustment and you'll really be able to see the difference and the reason that it's a good idea to do it and to pay attention to whether or not you need it. Um, Rachel will be, will be back on Wednesday at noon mountain time. She is interviewing Mandy who have started a new garment pattern company called Make With Mandy and they're just gonna have a really fun conversation. So I hope that you come back on Wednesday at noon mountain time and join Rachel and Mandy. Thanks for watching, bye for now.